This is ABC. From KAIT TV, serving Region 8, Shelby Timmons, David Avery, Craig Yancey. This is Region 8 News. Some residents of Pleasant Plains believe their drinking water has been contaminated. Today, pollution control and ecology and other officials met with residents. The PCE say residents have nothing to worry about, but residents of Pleasant Plains disagree. That's our story tonight. Good evening, everyone. I'm Shelby Timmons. Is the drinking water safe? That's what residents want to know. You'll recall that in January, officials discovered that chickens about to be processed at Townsend Poultry Plant in Batesville were contaminated with heptachlor, a cancer-causing pesticide. Officials were forced to destroy tens of thousands of chickens that became infected after eating feed that contained the chemical. Today, residents were given the opportunity to voice their concerns. So the meeting is to give the uh, EPA and the state uh, officials the opportunity to explain to the local people what has happened uh, with reference to the, the burial of the contaminated chickens uh, and to resolve any problems that uh, may exist with reference to the uh, water supply. Residents contend the contamination from the chickens will run off into their streams and in their drinking water. PC&E and other state officials were at the meeting. They talked and the townspeople listened, but residents are still not satisfied. My complaint is the, is the future of what they've done to us. I think our water pollution uh, is going to be greater than they've even gave us any idea that it's going to be. Do you feel like the people, the officials, state officials, and uh, who all were at the meeting today were honest? I think they were everything but honest. They were caught in too much double tongue talk. PCE officials contend the level of contaminant is too low to be harmful. The chickens have a very, very low level of contaminant. And that particular contaminant is common in things like termite spraying under your house. And the reason it's common in termite spraying is because it stays put. When you put it down, it doesn't wash off. I think it's one of the most disgraceful things that's ever been done in this state, and I don't think they should be allowed to get by with it. I think they should have to clean it up. Senator, you're the voice for the people here in this area. What, what will you do for them? The only thing that I really think we can do right now, I talked to Dr. Joyce Elders at the State Health Department this week. She assured me that she would help set up a monitoring program. I think that's the next logical step is to work with Townsend and work with the State Health Department in monitoring the wells, monitoring some of the ponds and some of the streams around here to be sure that the heptachlor is not going to move the individuals who are here with the Pollution and Control Department, those from Livestock and Poultry and the Health Department, I think did a good job of explaining that the burial that they have, have ta is taken place is going to be safe and that the uh, heptachlor is not going to get into the wells. All the water off this place drains down into our wells and down into Red River and White River. And it's going to, there's no question about it being contaminated. It was contaminated when they dumped it there. So it's not no ifs and ands whether this will be in 10 years from now or not. It's there now. While the source of the contamination has not been determined, Townsend Poultry has agreed to begin a monitoring program on the site to check water samples often. Arkansas lawmakers have returned home following yesterday's close of the 77th General Assembly. Legislators introduced more than 1,500 bills during the 68-day session with 600-plus pieces of legislation winning the governor's signature. The legislature's work is probably not over this year. Several lawmakers say a special session is almost inevitable to try to raise more money for teachers and state employees. David Avery has reaction from two area lawmakers on the recent session, as well as the governor's thoughts on calling lawmakers back. Many are criticizing this year's legislative session as a do-nothing session. But two Jonesboro lawmakers say that depends on what side of the fence you were on. For the people who didn't want taxes passed, it was a great session because we didn't pass any taxes. And uh, for those who wanted taxes passed, of course, it was a bad session. Uh, Governor Bill Clinton says he has mixed feelings about the session. Lawmakers soundly rejected Clinton's $200 million education package, but the governor won approval of several educational reform bills. Uh, legislation to give more choice to parents and children uh, about where they go to school. Legislation to give the state more ability to uh, 
change the leadership structure of schools where children aren't learning. Uh, legislation to give our people report cards on every school every year. Clinton is disappointed, though, that the state walked away with what he called a disastrous education budget, and many lawmakers aren't happy either. Out of all the school districts in the state of Arkansas, there's only one school district or two that's going to get a, more revenue than it did last year. It's going to receive less revenue than it did last year. I hope that we can have a special session later and raise some money to fund uh, our colleges and universities and our public schools in a more appropriate manner and increase scholarships for working families in Arkansas for their children, uh, increase teacher pay and do some other things. I'm, I'm going to try. But would lawmakers change their minds and vote for the governor's package in a special session? But if I'm convinced that the majority of people in this area are just totally against any kind of increase, then I, I might be against it. He's got to be sure he has a support before he calls us back. If he don't, it'll just be another wasted session. David Avery, Region 8 News. If lawmakers are called back, it would mark the fifth time Clinton has called a special session since 1987. After logging some two million miles, the space shuttle Discovery returned to Earth safely this morning after a five-day mission. The five astronauts and NASA officials proclaimed the journey a success. After five days and two million miles in space, Discovery appeared as a brilliant white arrow in the western sky over California. An estimated half million spectators were lined up in campers and trailers in the early morning light to watch and welcome the astronauts home. Commander Mike Coates piloted his 100-ton glider through a steep descent, popped the landing gear down at the last minute, and glided to a perfect landing on the runway at Edwards Air Force Base. The national anthem played in the background. The crowds whooped and cheered, and flight controllers broke into big smiles as the first shuttle mission of the year came down safely. Houston Discovery will stop. Well done, Discovery. That's one to be proud of. We felt like we rode through the whole mission with you. Roger, Houston. Great way to start the 89 schedule, Mike. Less than an hour later, the crew members emerged to find NASA Administrator James Fletcher waiting at the bottom of the steps to shake their hands and congratulate them. Shuttle boss Richard Truly told a news conference later, this spacecraft has returned with only minor dings and scrapes. The uh, vehicle is as clean as any orbiter that I personally have ever seen. The, uh, there's almost uh, no visible tile damage at all. NASA plans six more shuttle missions this year, the next set for April 28th. Vic Ratner, ABC News, Washington. The shuttle Atlantis is scheduled to go onto the launch pad this Wednesday. For the April launch, Atlantis will carry a smaller spacecraft that will be sent to Venus to map the surface of that planet. In other news, federal investigators are sifting through the rubble of a DC-9 charter cargo plane that crashed after takeoff from Carswell Air Force Base in Texas. The aircraft was under contract to the Air Force to fly unspecified cargo between Carswell and Tinker Air Force Base near Oklahoma City. Officials say the plane had been loaded with explosives and other cargo at Carswell and had taken off for Tinker when the crew noticed a cargo door open. The crew radioed to turn back to Carswell when the plane disappeared from radar and crashed. The two crew members perished in the crash. Investigators from the National Transportation Safety Board and the Federal Aviation Administration are on the scene investigating the crash. Tomorrow is Election Day in El Salvador. An election leftist guerrilla forces are desperately trying to disrupt. In New York today, hundreds of people gather to protest U.S. intervention in El Salvador. They feel U.S. policy in the region has resulted in years of conflict and war in that country. Coming up next, an explosion of sorts in the music industry. Making your own music after this. Woodford Sales in Truman is bringing you gold, XLT Gold. Right now, get an XLT Gold Lariat for just $226.96 a month. This XLT Gold Lariat has power steering, power brakes, tilt, air, speed control, sliding rear window, chrome step rear bumper, and much, much more. Or take a look at this U.S. Ranger XLT Gold. This truck has power steering, power brakes, air conditioning, sliding back glass, Ranger nameplate, special hood ornament, and more, all for only $197.97 a month. Get a golden deal right now at Woodford Sales in Truman.
makes Sonic really unique? Freshness. Unlike most other fast food restaurants, we prepare your order fresh every time. That means your Sonic burger, coney, steak sandwich, onion rings, and fries are fixed just the way you like them. Like Sonic's famous extra long cheese coney, smothered with zesty chili, cheese, and chopped onions, with a medium soft drink at a special low price. Fresh, fresh, and better than ever. This past year's crops were better than they've been in a long time. That's going to let me do some things I've been putting off. So I'm replacing Warren Tars with Armstrong Rice and Cane from my local SFA Farm Supply Cooperative. Armstrong Tires have the proven tread design and the best field and stubble guarantee going. But just as important, I know SFA and Armstrong are standing behind Southern farmers. See your local SFA Farm Service Center at any of these convenient locations. Many of us can remember taking music lessons at one time or another as children. Well, those children are adults now. And not only are their children taking lessons, mom and dad are too. More Americans than ever are learning to play music. They're taking lessons in everything from piano to drum to sax. This is clearly music to the ears of the multi-billion dollar retail music industry. Sales of instruments, sheet music, and accessories grew 60% between 1982 and 87. We've seen some strong growth in 1988, particularly in the traditional side of the music instrument categories. And that would include areas of uh, uh, acoustic guitars, band instruments, uh, and in subcategories of the acoustic piano. <laughs> This is a rebirth. It just fits into my life now. I find it very relaxing, and um, I enjoy listening to music, and I'd like to be able to make some music. Kids learn to play in school because mom and dad say so, but private classes are filling up with adults. I had more calls from adults and surprise that so many of them want to start lessons or are giving themselves this gift now as it is. It's real interesting. They say that anybody can learn to play music. Well, we're going to find out. I haven't had one of these up to my lips since I was in the eighth grade. Now I remember why I quit. But if it's true that music makes the world go round, then we can thank these dedicated amateurs who, good or bad, are doing their best to make sure there is music in the air. This is Tony Cox reporting. The music I heard early this hey. morning wasn't exactly music, but it certainly Ooh. was noisy. Yeah, we rattled some uh, rooftops <laughs> That's uh, right. this morning. Mother Nature, I should say, rattled some rooftops. <laughs> we I've had always, to do with it. <laughs> I've always wanted to play some instrument, instruments, but I'm uh, just not musically inclined at Don't all. Don't feel bad. Neither am I. Neither you. But we can't <laughs> talk about weather, can we? Or at least we try, that's for sure. Mother Nature, as we said, rattled some rooftops overnight. We'll tell you uh, what happened and what will occur for the next couple of days. But first, let's look at the photo of the day from Tony Wall of Beach Grove, the Spring River. Hi, I'm Joan London. Monday actor director Peter Horton from the hit TV series 30 Something. Then later in the week, Boy George talks about his comeback and new album. Also, ballet great Rudolph Nureyev will be joining us right here on Good Morning America. Start your day with Good Morning America and KAIT. St. Bernard's Regional Medical Center is doing something special for women. Watch KAIT Saturday at 10.30 p.m. as St. Bernard's presents Issues in Health, Focus Women's Health. This live program will be devoted entirely to women's health problems. The panel of doctors will discuss a wide variety of topics, so get your questions ready and become a part of the program. Issues in Health, Focus Women's Health, live this Saturday at 10.30 p.m. Just one more way St. Bernard is caring for you. Ramey Holdsworth before Nutrisystem. Ramey Holdsworth after Nutrisystem. I lost 100 pounds in 10 months. And I feel wonderful. I've probably lost thousands of pounds in my entire life, but I've always put the weight back on again. Now I've been keeping it off for six years. I feel very attractive about myself. Um, I didn't realize that I could actually feel this way and, and look this way, too. 
Call Nutrisystem today. The Nutrisystem weight loss program really works. Who's news? What's up? When it happens. Where it's going. Why it's hot. See it now. USA Today on TV. From a different angle, we gaze at five on KAIT. Well, Mother Nature huffed and she puffed as she blew a cold front through overnight, but uh, luckily for us, we did not get any severe weather and uh, very little, uh, if any, rainfall in the area. Now, the high temperature today, this is what a cold front will do to you, 51 degrees, 26 degrees cooler than yesterday's 77, 36 the low for the day, which is the current temperature. A year ago, 43 and 33, the record's 88 in 1921, and 24, the record low in 1947. We got just about a half an inch of rainfall at the TV station, about a third of an inch at Jonesboro Municipal. For the year, we're plus 17 inches, and also on the plus side, some eight and a third for the year. Right now, 36 degrees and clear in Jonesboro, the barometer is rising at 30.42 inches of mercury, 72% surface humidity. Winds right to the northeast at 10, gusting to 18. That's keeping the wind chill below freezing, around 24 degrees outside. Winter is trying to make a return back into the area. Check of temperatures, Poplar Bluff at 34 degrees, the cool spot at this hour. Little Rock at 49, really you can see where the cloud cover is prevalent across the state. The cloud cover hanging down toward the south and also around Mountain Home, keeping the temperature up a little bit. Where it's clear, temperature is really going to drop tonight, and we could see uh, temperatures in the upper 20s, especially for the northern part of the viewing area, around 30 to 35 for the rest of the state. The uh, satellite photo shows a few clouds remaining, as we said, in central and southern Arkansas due to that cold front that moved through. We did not get any severe weather in our area. There were some reports of hail in northwestern Arkansas as the cold front moved through last night. However, that's not the case in North Carolina where several power lines and trees were blown down and a lot of structural damage to parts of North Carolina. There is a uh, severe thunderstorm watch in effect for portions of eastern North Carolina as this whole cold front continues to move through the area and affect portions of the mid-Atlantic states. For us, though, the tail end of the cold front is going to back up as a warm front, and that's going to give us another chance for rain, looks like late tomorrow night and into Monday. Here you see the cold front and the storms along with it. By tomorrow, this cold front will begin to back up just a little bit as a warm front. There will be about a 50% chance for some late evening thunder showers tomorrow night around 10 o'clock or so as this backs up and also as a low pressure center begins to form out of the desert southwest. And as all of that moves through on Monday, Looks like a good chance of rain in the forecast. Let's go to uh, that forecast as we were talking about. Fair and very cold tonight, clear with a northeast wind at 10 to 15, a low of 30 degrees. Then for tomorrow, expect a partly sunny day, but a 50% chance of rain after dark. A northeast wind switching to the southeast, a high of 57 degrees and a low of 47. And the extended forecast, Monday. What a day to start the work week back. A good chance of rain and thunder showers in it. Decreasing cloudiness and a little cooler for Tuesday and definitely cooler for Wednesday. And look at the temperature, 27 degrees, the predicted low. So very chilly readings by midweek, but we'll warm back up by Thursday. So rain back in the forecast. It looks like late tomorrow night and Monday and cooler weather, especially by midweek. You certainly got a look at that this morning. It was quite cold. It was. Thank you, David. And Craig Yance is here with a look at tonight's sports. Yeah, we're counting them down, getting down to that Sweet 16 in the NCAA tournament. Unfortunately, the Arkansas Razorbacks won't be there. We've got other sports <laughs> news, and we'll tell you all about it coming up. Distressed emotional states like anxiety, depression, and other traumatic events may trigger a chemical dependency on prescription drugs. At Cross Point in Forest City, Arkansas, there is professional help through our chemical dependency care program for those who are chemically dependent on alcohol or drugs. For a happier, chemically free life, call Cross Point Alcohol and Drug Treatment Center. Forest City, Arkansas, 501-633-2020.
To put a great career together, you need the right skills. At Votech, we'll help you get the skills you need to get the job you want in business and marketing, agriculture, technical, home economics, trade and industrial, or health. Call the number on your screen now for your free career kit. If you're in high school and thinking about your career, if you're out of school and looking for a better job, think Votech, where careers come together. Jack's grand reopening continues with great low prices on name brand appliances and electronics. Like this frost-free Whirlpool 18 cubic foot refrigerator with an energy saver, only $4.49. Or this Whirlpool heavy-duty washer, now $2.99. Plus, no payment required for 90 days and no down payment required. You can save big during Jack's grand reopening sale at Jonesboro, Paragoo, Walnut Ridge, and Batesville. Make tracks to Jack. For more than 80 years, people have come home to homes with Anderson windows. Come home. And while times have changed, our commitment to quality and to the home has not. Which is why today, more people come home to Anderson windows than any other. Come home to quality. Come home. If you listened to your neighbor, then you were probably one of many who thought the Arkansas Razorbacks were heading to the Sweet 16. I'll admit, I was one of them. It looked as though the Hogs had peaked at the right time, walking through the Southwest Conference Tournament and having a little trouble out of a frightening Loyola Marymount team just two days ago. But if you listened to a Louisville Cardinals fan, then you knew today would be it for the Razorbacks. Sure, the Cardinals struggled down the stretch of the regular season, but make no mistake about it, they're a tournament team, and today they proved it from the outset. This one looked a lot like the Arkansas Marymount uh, game from just a few days ago. If we can go to the video, thank you very much. <laughs> After the Ellison jam, credit gets it down court to Mayberry. He gives it up to Howell. Dunk you very much. Hogs up by six at this point, but here comes the Cavalry. On the break, Sullivan leaves it for LeBradford Smith. Back and forth we go in the first half, and Nolan Richardson looks for help. The Cardinals finally go up by seven at the break as Ellison feeds Courtney Holden for the match. On we go to the second stanza where it was El Mucho, the same old, only worse so, LeBradford Smith. Little showtime there, the Cardinals in the middle of a 16-point run, and the Hawks never got back in it. Louisville wins it by nine today, 93-84. Smith had 26, and Ellison had 21 for the Cardinals. They are looking for their fifth trip to the Final Four this decade. To get there, they will have to beat Illinois, third ranked in the nation, as they beat Ball State today, 72-60. Nick Anderson had 24. The Fighting Illini has now won or is now 29-3. and three. They put an end to the Cardinals' 16-game winning streak tomorrow in the Midwest. It'll be Missouri, Texas, and Syracuse, Colorado State. In the Southeast this afternoon, top-seeded Oklahoma finally got on track after Thursday's close call with ETSU and Louisiana Tech paid for it. The Sooners came out bombing from the opening tip, and the Bulldogs never really had a chance. There's no wrath greater than that of a woman scorned, which doesn't really fit here, but I just like the way it sounds. Oklahoma wins at 124-81 today. Mookie, Mookie Blaylock, 34 points, a career high. Stacey King, 21 points and 15 rebounds. That 124 points breaks the tournament record by one set by North Carolina last year. They will be taking on Virginia on Thursday, thanks to Richard Morgan and 33 points today as they beat Middle Tennessee State. Tomorrow in the Southeast, it'll be North Carolina, UCLA, and South Alabama and Michigan. In the East Regionals, number nine, Duke, number 17, West Virginia. The Mountaineers stayed on the Blue Devils' heels all day long. Nice pass from Berger to Chris for the stuff. But then Duke turned on the afterburners. Danny Ferry for free. He led the Devils today with 20. And then Lakner will give it up to Bricky. Who called this a no-contact sport? Duke wins at 70-63. Danny Ferry, as I mentioned, had 20. The Blue Devils are now 26-7. They will face the Golden Gophers of Minnesota on Thursday. Willie Burton had 19 today as they get past the measled Saints of Siena. 80-67 tomorrow in the NCAA East. NCAA East. There you go. It'll be Georgetown, Notre Dame, and NC State and Iowa. In the West Regional, the running Reds of UNLV and the Blue Devils of DePaul, the Blue Demons of DePaul, tied at 40 at the break. Reds finally got it going. Second half, David Butler, COD, has care of dunk. Reds by four. Oh, no. Make that nine. Stacey Ogman will run down the loose rock right here, put it back up and in, count it, and he's fouled. UNLV goes on to win at 85-70 today as they beat DePaul. And they will face Arizona, the number one ranked team in the nation on Thursday. Sean Elliott had 25 today. Arizona has won 11 in straight, and they are 29 and 3. Tomorrow in the NCAA West, it will be Indiana, Utah, Seton Hall, and Evansville. At the high school overalls tonight in Conway, Blyville is your state overall boys champion, 
winning 56-41 over 3A champion Malvern, and Bryant beats the Lady Yellow Jackets to win 75-57. Good season for both of those teams. Next thing you know, they'll be wanting to sell the Alamo to Japanese tourists if they'll throw in a free walk. Just weeks ago, America's team that Alice Cowboys was sold to Arkansas businessman Jerry Jones. Today, Texas Rangers fans welcomed a new owner, or owners, I should say. A group headed by the president's son, George W. Bush, officially took control of the American League Club at a press conference this afternoon. Former owner Eddie Childs, who received around 46 million bucks for his stock, says it was a good move. Rate, they're going to be Texas Rangers through and through, and will also represent the Metroplex, just like I have. And they're going to be the kind of people you'll enjoy knowing. To us, this is not a takeover. To us, this is an infusion of new blood in a very stable franchise. Now to the PGA Tour in Ponte Verde, Florida, where the prestigious TPC tournament is in its third round. Veteran Bruce Litsky held the lead when the day began, but faltered late, and the field converged like buzzards on road pie. Early on, things didn't look too bad for Litsky. Nice little chip here off the fringe of the 14th. A two-foot putt saves his par and his lead, but just ahead on 16, Mark McCumber, the defending champion, sinks the eight-foot birdie. Suddenly, it's a two-horse race. Scratch that. Make it a one-horse race again. Chip Beck came from four shots back to storm past the leader. Go to the clubhouse with a one-stroke lead. He is at nine under. Followed by Tom Kite, just one shot back, who also stormed up with a nice round of 69 today. Then there's five players, Litsky, McCumber, Ben Crenshaw, Gary Coates, and Freddie Couples, all at seven under. On the LPGA Tour today at the Tucson Open, Lori Garbazzi blowing them out, 12 under. Martha Nauzi, two shots back. Jan Stevenson, two shots back of her. And then three players are all at seven under. Checking sports notes for you very quickly tonight. The University of North Carolina's leading scorer, J.R. Reed, has been suspended for tomorrow's NCAA tournament game with UCLA. Coach Dean Smith made the announcement after learning that Reed and redshirt Rodney Hyatt missed team curfew by a few minutes. Other college basketball news involves the University of Kentucky coach Eddie Sutton. A published report in a Louisville newspaper said if Sutton doesn't resign, he's expected to be fired within a few days. One Kentucky official is quoted as saying, the Kentucky program has no chance of being revealed under Sutton after the NCAA action is complete. And Sutton says he has no intention of resigning. I'm with you, Eddie. Hang in there, pal. <laughs> That's sports on your... What is today? Saturday? Only yeah. Saturday. Well, I worked last night, so, you know, you screwed up a little bit. <laughs> Thank you, Craig. Uh -huh. There's more to come on Regent News. Stay with us. Before I make any investment, I review the market. That's exactly why I bought an 89 Pontiac Grand Am. I compared a lot of dealerships and cars, even imports. The best buy is Pontiac Grand Am, just 10 .469. And because I bought now, I got 500 cash back. When I invest, I expect great returns. My Grand Am is really paid off. Carlock Pontiac Flyville, Horner Motor Perigo, Maple Motor Corning, Acock Jonesboro. The Hearing Aid Dispensary is now open next to the Country Boy Bakery on East Nettleton in Jonesboro. Betty Meredith, formerly with Jonesboro Hearing Aid, brings years of experience and training to her work at the Hearing Aid Dispensary. Betty is fully licensed and sells and services most major hearing aids. Right now, the Hearing Aid Dispensary is offering a free hearing test and 30-day free trial of your aid. Call now, 931-8806, and ask about Betty's open house specials at the Hearing Aid Dispensary in Jonesboro. The fire and sparkle of diamonds and the personal guarantee of Tom Miller. You get both from Best Jewelers. Best Jewelers has built a reputation on making diamonds affordable. Quality merchandise, fair pricing, and service after the sale. That's all you can ask for in a jeweler. I bought my diamond at Best Jewelers. Quality, affordability. Tom Miller personally guarantees both at Best Jewelers in Jonesboro. Hey, I'm Bubba, owner of Bubba's Trailers, and this is your lucky day, because I can put you in one of these babies right. At Smoot Mobile Homes, you won't find any trailers. Today's manufactured homes are quality built. Daryl Smoot and his staff will take the time to show you the difference, plus help you with financing to fit your budget. And, and it's got these windows that it cranks out, and, and don't worry about that. Now, my brother-in-law can fix that. Don't get caught by Bubba. Come to Smoot Mobile Homes in Marmaduke for the absolute best deal. David Avery joins us once again to take a look at an extended forecast. New feature we're going to try for you tonight. The region 8 o'clock weather forecast in the morning should be mostly clear and 36 degrees 8 o'clock if you go to church or up and about to head to work. 
And the forecast for tomorrow calling for partly sunny and mild, a high expected in the upper 50s. And Sunday night, increasing cloudiness with a 50% chance of rain. There we go. Monday looks to be cloudy with a chance of rain or thunder showers, decreasing cloudiness and cooler on Tuesday. We'll give the next three days a five on the weather scale of 10. Not a bad day tomorrow. Rain tomorrow night and a good chance of rain on Monday, then clearing out and a little dry spell for the latter part of the week. Thank you, David. A nice feature that is. Okay. Well, that's the news at this hour. Thanks for watching. For everyone here at Channel 8 News, good night. Star Trek The Next Generation will be delayed one half hour, so we may bring you the following St. Bernard special.